It's an older code, sir, but it checks out. Shalom, everyone, and welcome to the Pilot Podcast. You might be wondering, why do we call it the Pilot Podcast? Because we don't have a name for it. And this is the first episode, so it's a pilot. It's the Pilot Podcast. Makes sense, right? At least that's what the marketing team thinks. Isn't that right, guys? I'm staring at a Venom mug. Either everyone's dead or I've gone insane. Or they were figments of my imagination. We'll deal with that later. But tonight's topic of the pilot podcast is a galaxy very fucking far away. A Star Wars retrospective. Now, Star Wars. Everyone and their fucking grandma knows what Star Wars is. Your dog knows what Star Wars is. I'm pretty sure uncontacted tribes in the Amazon know at least... At the very least, that Vader is Luke's father. And you can't say spoiler alert. That's like one of the only spoilers in the universe that I think you can't say spoiler alert for. Because if you don't know what the fuck it is, you're literally a child. Not even not even a child. You're literally either someone who's been terribly abused in their life, or you were just born five minutes ago. And even then, I think it's a crime that your family hasn't shown you at least a new hope yet. I digress. I just try to... I, I just... I don't... I have, uh, I have lost things to my, uh, to my mystical pen. It broke on me. It literally just broke on me, which is a fantastic, fantastic point of view. For I'm way up here. It's very going off topic. And I don't care, that's all. Okay, Sit, work with me here, all one of you. And that one person's me listening back to the audio. B- work with me, all right? Future, future David, work with me. I'm new to this. I haven't had m- much practice. In fact, this is the 18th time I've recorded this. Because I am terrible at speaking. Very terrible without like something in my face. And all that's in front of my face is my notes. My topic notes and stuff. And my brain keeps wanting to roll off into different things. Because whenever I start speaking to myself, I am inconsequently just talking to myself. Hearing the response in my head and having a one-sided conversation myself. And people can't hear the whole damn thing. Which is really weird. And I just realized I'm still going off topic. So... Star Wars. All right. Before I dwell into what I'm going, my main topic points of Star Wars will be, let me first begin with my my memories of Star Wars. Okay. My memories of Star Wars go. The earliest memories I have is really weird for me. One was when I was five. The other was when I was eight. All right. When I was five, I remember watching. I didn't know if I watched the whole trilogy, but I remember watching at the very least the, uh, the original, the original cut of episode five on VHS empire strikes back. I remember because I have distinct fond memories of Vader of the scene where Vader kneels down and, uh, the Emperor's face begins, and he says, The son of Anakin Skywalker could be of great use to us. Good Vader. <laughs> and Vader is like, If he could be turned, he could be a great asset. And then, you know, I, that was the worst Vader voice of all mankind. It wasn't even the Vader voice. Uh, other than that, it was 
about three years later, coincidentally enough, when I was eight, I remember playing, getting and playing the first Lego Star Wars game. The one that was episodes one, two, and three. I remember that. I remember playing that. And I remember playing the shit out of that and loving it. And I remember seeing that. And it made me go and beg my parents to get me episodes one, two, and three for Christmas that year. And boy, oh boy. I never got why I fucking loved those at first. I guess I really loved the game. But then later, I mean, that same, I mean, a few months later, my sister, who knew Star Wars because she was born when the first films came, when the first film came out, got me episodes four, five, and six on DVD. Problem was, they were the special editions. So I did not know there was an original cut and a special edition cut. I just thought I was having, like, I didn't know what the fuck the Mandela effect was at the time. But uh, I was have I thought I just had like a version of that pretty much. I was remembering something false, and that was always the case because I did not know that they had changed it until I was older. So for years, it was just the new cuts uh, of the original trilogy and the prequel trilogy was what I saw. And I remember seeing the Clone Wars TV show, the uh, standalone movie that came out in theaters. I remember seeing that and the subsequent I watched the entire of her series of the Clone Wars, including the uh, the 2000. What was it? 2004, 2003. Um, I think it was 2004, 2004 or five. The animated Clone Wars series. I remember watching not when it was airing. I remember watching reruns of it on Cartoon Network. And I remember really enjoying the action in that. And, you know, laser. They're, sa they're light sa They're fucking sabers, I know. But people like saying, laser swords. <laughs> Seeing those cut through fucking robots was like, it was like, yes, I love this. And Obi-Wan Kenobi is so cool. Fuck all you Mace Windu's people. You only like him because he's Samuel L. Jackson. He has a purple lightsaber. You only like him because he's unique. And like Obi-Wan, Obi-Wan's the best. He had the high ground. Always had the high ground. I'm going off topic. I know that. But I have to preach about Obi-Wan's greatness for at least a few seconds. Okay. Uh -huh. I watched that for years. And then I discovered Plinkit, which I think a lot of people gets. I think that's where a whole generation of uh, online video critics get like their base is from like, it's either nostalgia critic or Plinkit. And I think Plinkit produced a lot of better ones. Not to be negative to nostalgia critic. Doug Walker is great. I've just, as I aged, I look back and I think his stuff is not as good. Everything minus the pro. I think everything minus like his, some of his cutaway gags and the, uh, just everything to do with his commercial sagas is like the only things I look back and remember. Yeah, I remember liking that. Everything else I remember, yeah, I was like, I remember liking at the time, but I look at it now and I'm like, how did I ever like this? He could do well for children in television. Probably well. But back on topic, again, I'm going off topic a lot. Expect me to derail sometimes. I have these notes right here to try to keep my brain on track but when I start rambling on this is why I would like to have if my fucking co-host was here to help me keep myself on track so I don't eventually derail into a fucking fiery Hindenburg crash which is a terrible analogy because I just made a train analogy to a fucking blimp I'm still going off topic come back to the reality David we lost you the, oh, the accident was not your fault you gotta let him go it's not a, it's all it's the Jedi way <laughs> but back to Star I watched the Clone Wars series for years and I that's what I was growing up mainly on I didn't watch the original, tr the OG trilogy much, but I watched the Clone Wars trilogy, the Clone Wars, the TV show a lot. And then 
when I was about a teenage, when I was 13, I mean, or so, I discovered Plinkit. And I watched his video his reviews of Phantom Menace and all that. And I remember my opinions changing because I was a very susceptible young child. And I like, if I saw something on the internet and someone seemed like they knew what they were talking about, I immediately was like, yes, they are right. Everyone is wrong. So I jumped on the prequel hate wagon finally at that point and it's like they are garbage fires and deserve to die immediately which I mean come on come on that's an insult to garbage fire okay I'm choking episode I, mean, I jumped on that hate for a long time until probably up to about two years ago two or three years ago I after sometime after Force Awakens came out by the way Force Awakens when Disney bought Star Wars I thought this means we're definitely getting new Star Wars stuff and I was piped for that like a lot of people at the same time I was really pissed off because Cartoon Network had to stop airing the Clone Wars and that really made me sad because I, something I was watching for years just abruptly ends with Ahsoka walking out of that temple and then we get the Netflix exclusive season lost season shit which was just the Yoda fighting out there's force ghost shit arc kind of made me disappointed because I really wanted to see it literally go right up until episode 3 and fully explain to me 100% why there was no Ahsoka or Captain Rex in episode three. I didn't get that. Instead, I got a novel like in 2016 that explained it for me. I'm not mad. I'm not mad. I had to go read a book to, to, to get some closure on one thing I really wanted since I was a childhood. No, not at all. Not, not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Not at fucking... Oh, I'm killing them all! Where are they? I'll kill them! Okay, calm down. Okay. But... Well, st I'll stop right here for, uh, before Force Awakening. Because that's my mo- I mean, because... That's when I'll start getting to a lot of the... A lot of the tr the Disney stuff is well. I'll start getting to a lot of my negativity, which is gonna bring some unwanted attention maybe to this video. But at this point, I'll take any attention I can get. Besides going full Alex Jones, no one should ever go full Alex, Alex Jones. And I just brought the Alex Jones fans. And may I say, welcome. Your opinions suck. And guess what? You clicked on this. I already got the view. Fuck you. Disney will enjoy your money because I'm using copyrighted music. Ah, that's good copyright. <laughs> uh. But let's move on. Okay. Hey, let's let's move on to. Uh, you know what? Yeah, we might as well. Let's go into the Disney stuff. So Disney Star Wars. Everyone was excited, including myself. We all went. I saw Force Awakens. Fun fact. I saw Force Awakens three days early. Three days before the rest of America got to see it. Basically, I got to go to... I got to go to an employee screening at my local theater. Because they have the film. They get the films early. And, you know... They showed some in the film to the employees early. My sister was a manager there at the time, so I went with her and watched the film. The film. And man, it was fun for those few days knowing how the movie was going to go and everyone else in high school was like, "Oh man, what's going to happen?" And I was sitting there like, "I fucking know." I feel like you know what's going to happen. In fact, I had one of the first, first... Spoiler alert for all six 
of you that didn't see Force Awakens because it's a f made over a billion dollars. I think everyone on Earth almost saw it. But I have one of the first photos of Han Solo getting stabbed by Kylo Ren. Uh, I still have that on my computer. And I'll, I'll see it anywhere. I'll see if I can find it. But I have the photo somewhere. I'm on this laptop, either on this computer or my laptop or my phone or my other phone or on my other phone <laughs> I have it, or on a flash drive. I have it somewhere and it's the, it's, it's literally right when Han Solo is like, Oh shit. I just got stabbed by a lightsaber. That was the, uh, I was probably one of the first, I think I was the first, I doubt I was the first, but I was one of the first people to post that spoiler online. <laughs> And I, I was waiting for like Disney to come and do like, woo, woo, open the fucking door. And you know, I proceed to have to, I proceed to have to load my gun and you know fight off a horde of Mickey Mouses and lawyers, and lawyers that look like Mickey Mouse from uh, toppling into my bedroom to, uh, I don't know, kill me. Seduce me to the dark side of the force. Sell me a plate of cookies and a trip to Disneyland. I don't know. Put me into a small world, even though I'm probably older. You know, I think they kill them and put them in the Haunted Mansion ride. I think that's what happens. That's why all the ghosts are there. They're actually, you didn't know they're actual ghosts. But <sighs> I saw Force Awakens. I loved it at first. Then I saw it again. And then I saw it again. And the more I saw it, the more I started realizing. Um, this seems familiar. I started realizing this was episode four. This was Star Wars episode four. All over again. I mean, it's not a terrible thing. It's just. It's not terrible for the people who haven't seen Star Wars since Return I mean, since Revenge of the Sith. Even even it's even alright for the people who only seen episodes four, five, and six. Didn't even see any of the prequel trilogies. And this was their first Star Wars since 1981 or wherever the fuck Return of the Jedi came out. Or 83. I don't remember where Return of the Jedi came out. It's it's early 80s. I know Empire came out in like 80. So 82, I think, for, for Return of the Jedi. I'm not going to look it up. I don't have it in my notes at the moment. I'm not going to look it up. I'm just going to go early 80s, pre NES, Atari 2600 era. <laughs> but for people who hadn't seen Star Wars in a fuck long time, made sense. Made a shit ton of money for a reason. But for someone who'd been watching, who'd been consuming Star Wars on the regular since he was about eight years old, I kind of realized that, uh, something about this feels off. And it feels like a beat to beat, just retelling of episode four. And I. <sighs> Looking now, I just, I don't like Force Awakens purely because of that. I just, which seems a little petty, but it's like, this is the first chapter of a new, of a new Star Wars story. And I was feeling, I feel like just going back to, let's destroy this Death Star and have the plans and all that was, uh, at least episode one. At least tried to bait you with it, and they also had a cool, they had a cool lightsaber fight. But at least Episode One kind of reversed it with like instead of Death Star plans, we have the Prince, the Queen of Naboo, and we gotta hit, get her out of here. And they go on a little wacky adventure with that. I, I feel that that was better. I, I feel like that was a better, or I feel like that was better overall, just base point to point. Than just doing episode four again. Than doing a new hope all over again, pretty much. 
from the fucking stormtroopers burst down and murder. They're not rebels, but they might as well be rebels, just murdering fucking people with gun blasters to fit themselves. And then having a fucking astromech droid be the, holding the plant, holding the ma- in the plans slash map of fucking Luke Skywalker and all that fucking shit running away. It's like <sighs> I didn't, I didn't. I looking back, I don't really care. It's probably probably because Last Jedi and I will get to it in a second has tainted the image of this movie in my mind because it's part one to a part that goes to a part two that I fucking despise. Other than that, we'll continue on. Force Awakens was all right. We'll say it's all right. And then after Force Awakens, we get two things. We get the star. We get Star Wars Rebels, a sequel series to the Clone Wars. A lot of people, and I still see a lot of people, say that Rebels is trash. That ooh sucks. The lightsabers are thin. Yada yada yada. I th- I feel like they're fucking babies. Okay, I will admit Rebels season one is not the best story. It has it has glimpses in there though, with the Grand Inquisitor and Kanan realizing that. He, he needs to be a Jedi. Well, he was a Padawan, but he needs to be a Jedi again to teach this young Ezra the ways of the Force, even though his training in itself was never completed. And that's a great story. And the duel and the duel with the king and the duels with the Grand Inquisitor. And you never really had an overarching villain besides Grievous and Dooku. Who in the Clone Wars, like, you never had, like, a... Well, I mean, like, okay, in the original trilogy sense, we never had a villain besides Darth Vader and the Emperor. So seeing an overarching villain for this art, I don't even know what I mean saying anymore, to be honest. <laughs> Disregard. My brain just went... <laughs> That's probably from lack of sleep. Even all that, and the fact I'm literally... I'm running on coffee at this point. But... I digress. I like the Grand Inquisitor as a concept. Someone under Vader. A Force user under Vader, so we didn't have to use Vader. But we have someone for them to fight. And it was a good... I was alright. It wasn't terrible. It wasn't fucking amazing. But people seem to fucking forget that the first three seasons of Clone Wars, for the most part, kind of was bad. The malevolence art was all right, but fuck, they had some jar. They had those that Jar Jar episode on fucking um, Trandosian, Trandosia, Rodia, Rodia. That was the planet on Rodia, the Greedo species, and that was god fucking awful. And the animation was pretty bad. People don't seem to remember. Like there was a few good episodes. Scattered between it, but a lot of it. You you look at me in the eye and you see the episode where Anakin got hurt and they crashed on that planet with the fucking lemurs with us thing with Ayla Secura and you you tell me that episode was fucking good. You look at me dead in the eye and tell me that episode was good. Then I'll believe you that the first three that the first few seasons of Clone Wars was good. No, Clone Wars got good. Um, as it started realizing that it could age with its audience and we started to see some good shit such as the Umbaran arc the the Umbaran arc the uh, fucking Darth Maul returning getting really dark with fucking literally having a whole fucking saga of clones of a shitty Jedi master fucking trying to kill all of his clones so he can become Darth Maul Darth Maul's <laughs> Darth Dooku's apprentice and everything with Darth Maul in that series was fucking amazing 
Like, people said, I like Darth Maul. The people who said they liked Darth Maul before that didn't know what the fuck they were talking about. They liked him because he had two, he had a cool double lightsaber and he was red with horns. It's like, hey, it's cool. It looks good. It looks like a fucking metal elephant. I don't know why I'm speaking like a southerner doing that. <sighs> I, the people, why people like Darth Maul should be because of the Clone Wars, though. For what they did with him. And introducing Savage Press being kind of someone for Maul to play off of, which is really good. And also playing on the Obi-Wan Kenobi Darth Maul rivalry throughout that. And then you have the stuff with Mandalore, with the Death Watch, and, and Duchess Satine, and that whole overarching arc. And then the Batman, uh, the quote, the, not the, I was about to say it, but, uh, the uh, Domino Squad on Fives, Echo, Cutter, Heavy, and Echo. I don't know if I said Echo, but I'm including that anyway. Watching each one of them die was was fucking ter was saddening. Because you watch them from their training. And you watch them all slowly get picked off. Until there's just fives left. And fives goes out. Like, those were characters that you watched grow. From cadets to when fives and echo became arc troopers. All the way until fives' death. It was... It was good. And seeing Ahsoka. Ahsoka at the beginning sucked. She was bratty. She was arrogant. And she she was an annoying character. Kind of like Ezra was at the beginning of uh, Rebels. But as it went on, and as they got older, they became more mature, wiser. You know, like an actual fucking person. Because people have to be... They, the character has to be goddamn perfect at the beginning, apparently. And I'm noticing, I'm bringing back Rebels, because they have... They've played... Rebels are shorter than Clone Wars by, like, three... By two two seasons, I believe? Almost three, because we're getting more Clone Wars stuff. Uh, sometime this year or next year, as of this recording. I don't know. It's whenever Disney launches that new streaming service, but... um. But they were human. You saw these characters evolve. You saw better, and you saw the stories get darker. Like as they grew, the reality of the world they were in started setting in, and it wasn't a good reality to be in because both was and both were in a state of some conflict. Clone Wars being a literal fucking war of the gal in the galaxy, and Rebels being resistance groups fighting against a fucking tyrannical Nazi style government. <laughs> so I, th I think both series are really good and stand on their own. I think rebels may not may not be as overall good as the clone, Wars, but it does what it does set out to do. It does well, which for clone wars, I think the overarching story is the story of Ahsoka Tano. Clone Wars sets off to do basically three things. And one of the things it doesn't even, the one of the things it does on and off again. First one is the story of Ahsoka Tano from being introduced as Anakin's Padawan till her leaving, which coincides to as basically a story on how Anakin should have learned to let go but ultimately, it shows another reason of why he fell so far and joined the dark side. Number two was the perspective of the war from these clones. The people we saw in these stormtrooper-like armor in Attack of the Clones is like, oh, they're cool. They're 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 all they're fighting, but this obviously this is just going to be these are the proto stormtroopers. But see these people. Bred clones of Django Fett, but bred to be 
completely loyal to the Republic. Seeing like Rex, Fives, Echo. Oh, hard case. Seeing people like, th- seeing these clones grow. And the case of Rex being basically the main clone that we follow throughout it, see him go from an and going from a complete loyal would literally, if the Republic told him to shoot himself, he would do it on the spot to becoming a person, an individual, wondering, why am I here? Why am I fighting this war? And number three, number three reason the story through the Clone Wars was. The story of Obi-Wan coming to terms with his past. Because in it, Obi-Wan doesn't do a lot through it. He's mostly a... He's a main character slash side character, I would say. He gets episodes to himself, but most of the time he's serving as... Someone for Anakin or Ahsoka or Rex or Cody to play off of. Someone for the for the story to play off because he's a Jedi Master at this point. He's supposed to be wise and all that, but we see him come to terms with his past. Maul comes back. He has to he has to learn the de- he has to deal with that. He come he Duchess Satine comes back and comes back into his life, which we learn is someone he loved. His Padme. We see similarities between Obi-Wan and Anakin's story at this point. With Duchess Satine coming back, a woman that Obi-Wan would left the Jedi Order for. And seeing him watch her die in front of him. To Darth Maul. And Obi-Wan not falling, but instead rising as a Jedi. And prepared to let go. Basically, Clone I mean, Obi Wan and the story in the Clone Wars is like it's it's the exact opposite of what happened with Anakin. Anakin too attached, grew too attached, grew too emotional, and ultimately it led to his fall. He never learned to truly let go in the moment. Obi-Wan learned that, and it showed him losing someone greatly cared for, but still stay with the light. Which goes to show you later on, his when you see old Ben in episode 4, it gives you a whole new feeling. Because you see him, him then, and you know that man has been through a lot. And he's still oh, and he's still a faithful servant of the light, which is great. Rebels does uh, has has some stuff. He has some good stories too. It has several. The key thing with Rebels, I think, was mostly family. Ezra doesn't have. And Ezra starts out with no parents. He fi- later finds out his parents are dead, but he starts out with no parents. Goes through. When the entirety of the you know the show coming to terms a hundred percent, the story of Rebels basically is the trials of Ezra Bridger, his steps of becoming a Jedi Knight, home pretty much, and another and another form. It's a side story for the most part, but or, that does come to an end. But it's the story of of a uh, Sabine. In Ren, the Mandalorian and girl in the in the show, learning learning to fully trust others and her sickness to regain her honor and her and to be basically regain the respect, the love, and basically be with her family again, her actual family. It goes into the story of Zeb learning to forgive. The person who indirectly caused the almost extinction of his people. And the story of Kanan Jarrus, Caleb Doom, was his actual name, if you want that little fun fact. But Kanan Jarrus, completing his journey that he let go 
He ran away from the from the Jedi Order. Ran away from all after seeing his master get cut down in front of him during Order 66. Running away from the Force. Learning to come back to it. Come to terms with it. And losing his way. But coming back to teach a young ma uh, a young boy how to be a Jedi. And how to be a man. Basically being the big brother slash father figure for Ezra. Throughout the story. Teaching him how to be grow. And how to be a person. And how to be a good person. At that. And then. He go and then we had other stories. We had Ahsoka finish her Ahsoka coming back. Ahsoka Tana from Clone Wars coming back and fighting Darth fucking Vader. Which when I saw it, I proceeded to just instantly orgasm all over my computer and was like, I am done. There's nothing. We've reached the height of humanity, folks. This this is it. But then that same, that same, but I forgot to mention in that same arc in Rebels, Darth Maul came back. We never, the, unless you read the comics, the last you saw of, of Maul in any media, in a TV media form, was him losing his fight to Darth Sidious and Sidious saying, I have other uses for you. And that's it. To see him again was a nostalgia bait, probably, but left a lot of questions open that I hope they can go back and, you know, give us answers to. Probably not, but I would like the answers to them. So, seeing... So, Maul all was back. We saw Ahsoka come back and proceed to fight Darth Vader... Which was amazing, <laughs> mind you. Just the music, the f choreography. Basically, that fight was like sequel versus OG trilogy. Vader fought like how he would in the original trilogy, but Ahsoka was more acrobatic. Egg was more acrobatic, fast, like she, like you would see in the in the in the in the, in the prequel trilogy, episodes one, two, and three. So it was kind of cool to see like those two styles clash. And while I'm on that topic, let's talk about the light. Let's let's transition into lightsabers real quick before I go into Maul and Rebels a little more. The lights people bitch about the lightsabers and Rebels. And the lightsabers and Rebels are thin for a reason. Filoni wanted to... Dave Filoni, the man who brings you Clone Wars and Rebels, basically. Who many considered, basically, George Lucas 2.0, as far as, like, the world building for Star Wars is concerned. So, Dave Filoni, and his cowboy hat of wisdom, made the lights... decided the lightsabers and Rebels should go harken back to... I can't remember the guy's name in the moment... And I don't have it written down. I should have written it down. But the uh, basically, okay. Hey, the lightsabers and rebels were to harken back to harken back to the original illustrations, like the original concept art art of the. Of what the lightsabers were originally going to be. I can't find the guy's name at the moment. It's coming. It'll come to me probably tomorrow night. Fucking piss me off. But uh, it, it, the original man, the original person who drew the the concept art for the original trilogy, his original design for a lightsaber. It harkens back to that, which. I think it's all right. It's it's a visual choice. People may have a problem with it, but does it ruin the whole goddamn show? No, it shouldn't ruin the whole goddamn show. You people are fucking petty. I'm getting a little angry over it, but I thought they were all right. 
they were different. They harken, I mean, they harken back to all oh, the whole thing with rebels was trying to I mean, was trying to sh- harken back to a time when the empire was threatening. Season one wouldn't tell you that, but onwards it would tell you that with that because another thing, because another thing the rebels did was threat. The empire was a threat. And before I and, and I'm and before I do that, I need to go back onto the mall topic because I'm not great at structuring things, and I should probably write scripts. But I don't write scripts because I suck at writing scripts. So instead, I write notes like a talk ho- like a talk host show would, you know, blue cards basically. I'm going off topic again because I really love topic because I like filler because I hate filler but I like it at the same time because I hate it in my animes but I love it in real life because I can use it to help stretch out a video longer so I can claim that this is a podcast and instead of like a 15 minute long rant video makes my life a little easier but I digress on Maul and Rebels Maul came back in Rebels and the uh, Twilight Twilight something at season season two episode 21 and 22 Twilight of the Apprentice that's what it was Darth Maul comes back everyone's like oh shit it's fucking Maul he kicks ass he blinds Caden Jarrus and then he disappears he gets kicked off the side by Caden you don't see him again until season three. And he wants, he's basically, he has two goals in season three. His first goal was to try to make Ezra his apprentice. Because he wants, he wants to train someone so he can kill City. It's kind of his goal in the end. He tries to turn Ezra to the dark side. And ultimately, yeah, he fucking fails, obviously. But during this, him and Ezra combine two holocron, holocrons. Basically, information, basically book, Jedi books, holds tons of information. They combine them, and Maul learns in that Obi-Wan Kenobi is alive. So he tries to find... So for the rest of the season, he basically tries to find where Obi-Wan is. Eventually he does, which leads to the episode... Season 3, episode... 19. Twin Sons is what the episode's called. And Twin Sons is... One of the best... Is one of the good episodes... One of the best episodes in the whole series for Rebels. People are like, I don't have I think it's I think it does its thing well, okay? Because the story of Rebels is told through the perspective of Ezra. So to do this, we bring as Ez- Ezra sees Maul in bunches of visions. The reason he's seeing this is because Maul is trying to attack him. So it, thus he can lure out Obi-Wan Kenobi. Ezra goes to Tatooine and is eventually succeed, successfully draws out Kenobi on accident. Because Ezra believes if he can find Obi-Wan Kenobi, he will come back with him and have a, be a great fucking help for the Rebellion. Maul wants to bring him out so he can kill Kenobi. Ultimately, Ezra does bring Kenobi out. Kenobi goes on to say that Ezra is in the wrong place... He needs to be with the growing rebellion and his family, the ghost crew. And Kenobi has his own reasons and needs to stay on Tatooine. So he sends Ezra off and then we see Maul. And Maul says, and Maul and Kenobi's exchange here is beautiful with look what you've become a rat in the desert. Maul looking down on Obi Wan. Base judging him, wondering, and just saying, look what the mighty Obi-Wan Kenobi has become. A literal P 
pea, a literal oh, rat, a scourger, a rodent of the ant in the this in the great desert of Tatooine. Obi Wan says, "Look what I have risen above," implying all the journey he's went through. He's risen above the pettiness. He at one point was like Maul, driven. When Obi-Wan found Maul was back, he was driven to destroy, to defeat him, to avenge his master. But he learned he ri he's risen above that, even after Maul has taken almost everything from him, including the love of his life, his master, and the woman he loved. Obi-Wan is still has risen above it. Maul probes Obi-Wan for... Uh, and discovers that Obi-Wan is here protecting something, or perhaps someone. Knowing that, Obi-Wan ignites his lightsaber, knowing that Maul would try to go for Luke. So in defense of Luke Skywalker, Obi-Wan draws his blade, goes into his, the scene people were familiar with for episode three, the pose he does then, his classic Sarisu pose, his form three defensive pose that's famous that's basically when you see obi-wan in the in the uh, prequel trilogy that's that's what you envision and then he tricks them all he adopts the form that qui-gon jinn did when opening when he fought maul on naboo maul falls for it goes aggressive tries to do the exact same move that he used to kill Qui-Gon Jinn. But instead, Obi-Wan slashes through it. Slap and she maul in the head, killing him. And it's over like that almost. Like a classic samurai movie sword fight. Two masters staring each other down. It's a battle of the minds more than it is a battle of the blade. In the end, the one that wasn't consumed by a driven of anger and a desire for revenge turned out to be the winner. So when Obi-Wan said he had risen above, he had truly risen above. And with it, he was able to put the book in on Maul's journey. And Maul, in his dying breath, asks Obi-Wan, is it the Chosen One? Obi-Wan, despite what this man has done to him, holds him and comforts him in his last moments and acknowledges him, saying, he is. Which is fucking... Oh, which was fucking great. I don't see... People are like, I want her 20 minutes! Obi-Wan Kenobi fighting Darth Maul with backflips and 2,000 force ability. No, this was two old men past their prime. With an, a settling an old quarrel. A quarrel older than the Empire. Older than Luke. Older than the Rebellion. Older, I mean, older than the Clone Wars itself. Settling it one last time and I think that was fucking great and one of the reasons why you should have watched Dribbles and why everyone who thought it was terrible should have given it a chance and another thing with Rebels before I I'm really good at these endings but I'm really terrible at transitions because I'm transitioning going backwards almost to another whole topic on Rebels and one the last thing Rebels does in storytelling is telling you how the rebellion forms. Yes, we have legends and stuff, which I'm not greatly from. I was never greatly familiar with until after Disney bought Star Wars. So I didn't grow up knowing legends. I've only known legends since it became Hunter became legends. You didn't see the quotation marks because you can't see my face. So, I see some stuff. A lot of Legends is good, a lot of Legends is bad. 
and a lot of legends is just like, man, this is overly common. So, I think legends did have to go ultimately, and I and some of it's being brought back, good parts of it, i.e. In this story, we see how the rebellion formed, and in it, one of the main threats to this forming rebellion is Grand Admiral Thrawn, one of the best characters from the Legend series, a masterful tactician from the species known as the Chiss, from the Chiss Ascendancy, somewhere in wild space beyond the edges of the outer rim of the Star Wars galaxy in basically uncharted territory. And this person's one of the best strategic minds, if not the best strategic mind in the entirety of the Star Wars saga. From the Old Republic to SJW Holdo's light speeding a ship into the First Order. This is the smartest humanist creature in the fucking entirety of it. He could almost never be outsmarted. And ultimately, he and ultimately he was defeated by the one thing he never understood: the Force, <laughs> the Jedi. He never understood the Jedi and the Force, and a Jedi and the Force is what beat him in Rebels. And that's another thing. That's another good story. Thrawn is a great villain and was a great. He was the. He was, I could say he was hey, after the Inquisitors were dealt with in seasons one and two, in season three and four. He was the he was the main bad guy. Yes, you know the Emperor is involved in some form, but you couldn't do something that big because the Emperor has to die and has to be defeated by Luke and Vader. So. But showing how the rebellion formed and all that was really good. And seeing it from a small perspective, I think helped. Help pe can help people realize just how, how stacked against the odds the rebellion was. And on the topic of the rebellion, I would like to transition our rebels into our first spin-off Star Wars film that came out after Force Awakens. Star Wars Rebels. Star Wars Rebels. Now, that's Star Wars Rebels. Dear God. Frank, am I, am I drunk? You mean not drunk enough? All right. Or my co-host. Or my, uh... I'm a co-host. I don't have a co-host. According to my advisor, I am not drunk enough. I will help him by getting... by alleviating that problem. Okay. So... On a different up. Topic that doesn't involve me piling into my liquor cabinet in the middle of a recording. Star Wars. <laughs> Rogue One, a Star Wars story. That first spinoff movie in the Star Wars, in the new Star Wars, or is under Disney, pretty much. And it was... It's my favorite Star Wars movie that Disney has made. It tells the story of how the Rebels got a hold of the Death Star plans. And how they got into Leia's hands and eventually made it onto the Tantafor and led into A New Hope. But that was a good movie. It told it had some decent characters. The comedy was just right, because they have to have comedy in every fucking thing nowadays. So, I mean, I mean, there was comedy in the original trilogy, so I mean, it's not like I'm really bitching, so. They, I mean, but the movie follows Jyn Erso and 
uh, who is a young daughter of, of an Imperial scientist who designed pretty much the super laser. Mostly, based, yeah, the super laser with the Death Star, pretty much. And designed a lot of the Death Star. And it tells the story of her getting with a ragtag group of rebels taking the Death Star, getting the plans for the Death Star on a basic suicide mission. Spoiler alert, it is a suicide mission. And inadvertently kicking off the original trilogy, pretty much. And it was a really good, really good story, I think. Like, you were going to do how the Rebels took and stole the Death Star plants. I think, I think they ultimately did it all right. So, after, after Rogue One, which was a short topic, but there's not much to say. Rogue One is just Rogue One. It's, tells a story has some rebels easter eggs in there chopper from rebels is in there they mentioned general sundu which is which is uh hera sundula which is one of the main characters from rebels that was yawn but they mentioned that and other than that the Vader scene at the end is really fucking cool. But other than that, it's just, it's an all right. It's a terrible standalone film. It's good if you watch it and know what it's going on about. But I think that's kind of the point of it. It's a Star Wars story. A story in Star Wars. You need to see in Star Wars to see this. It's not Star Wars. Okay, you could see episode four without seeing episode one. You can kind of see episode six without seeing episode six, episode seven without seeing episode one or episode four. Like it's there's things here. So I think the the way they set up is like you have the main light trilogy for the high audience for all the uh, for all the. Uh, for the average moviegoers, and then a Star Wars story line is for the really hardcore people who read into the lore like I do and watch all the TV shows and stuff. For people like that, more more Star Wars, more story, more world stuff that we would probably know and would like to see. I think that's kind of what. Ultimately, the Star Wars storyline is and should be. Now, after that, we're going to discuss the elephant in the room. As I stare at its poster, rolled up in the corner, because I refuse to hang it up. Star Wars Episode... The Last Jedi. Like it or hate it, it was really decisive. Really decisive. It has split the Star Wars fandom pretty much down the middle. <laughs> and... And that's just my sister bitching at me. And the whole thing is the, thing, the whole thing. Now my brain's getting off. Great. Thanks a lot. All right. Okay. But with, let me go. Let me remember. Okay. Last Jedi. Last, like it or not, Last Jedi was decisive. It has split the fandom in half. And I personally don't like the movie. I, if this was your first Star Wars, if, if this was one of your first Star Wars films, I can see why you would like it. If you've only seen the Star Wars movies and never gone any deeper into the world, you can kind of understand it, even though I don't think you should, because you would kind of realize that Luke Skywalker shouldn't probably be acting the way he is. And I could probably go on for 15 hours about, and I really want to. But I think I will save that for a fucking fireside chat. But 
Let me just give you the abridged version. Star Wars The Last Jedi. Ultimately, in my opinion, takes what I know and what I love from Star Wars and decides that I shouldn't like I shouldn't like it. I should destroy it. I should let it go, which I mean is really one of the one of the quote teachings of the Jedi is let let go of the past and let go of your anger and your attachments. Yes, but I don't think we should apply that to the story of Star Wars, especially the the Skywalker saga, which in this one I feel rapes the name Skywalker because Luke Skywalker was a boy who saw the irredeemable Darth Vader, learned that this man was his father. And saw the good in him. When no one else in the galaxy. If you watched Rebels. The apprentice of that man. The person that knew that man. Before he was Vader. Knew that man years. A lot longer than Luke Skywalker ever did. And didn't think that man could be redeemable. But Luke Skywalker. Who only just learned that this man was his father. And only knew him up to that point. As the person who killed Obi-Wan Kenobi. His map, his master. He, and probably called in the hit on Owen and La Owen and Uncle, Uncle Owen and Aunt Rue Lars. So, seeing a great evil and then just finding the good in him, and deciding that he could be redeemed, and then redeeming him. This was the person who embodied hope. It's why he was called. It's why the first episode four is called a new hope. Luke Skywalker is that new hope because he eventually, because he brings hope to the galaxy and brings hope that Vader could be redeemed. And he does. And then to begin Last Jedi, pretty much, with him just looking at his father's lightsaber. The lightsaber Obi-Wan Kenobi gave to him on Tatooine. And told him about the Grand and Jedi Order. And that lightsaber belonged to his father. And then just tossing it over. Is the death of that man's character. Regardless of what you could fucking argue on. Regardless of what you tell me. That is the death of Luke Skywalker right there. Because he's not Luke Skywalker anymore after that. Luke Skywalker would have never saw his nephew go slightly to the dark side and then try to kill him. That was never what Luke Skywalker was. Never what Luke Skywalker stood for. So. That's my biggest problem with The Last Jedi. I you can talk I can talk I can tell you about Holdo and the Canto Bite shit and why and and Ray being a pretty much Mary Sue gets thrown around a lot, but she's pretty much designed to not lose. It's what they did to Luke Skywalker. And how they took everything, the man the character's arc. And threw it away. And just threw it away. Everything he did up to that up to that point. Might as well have been for nothing. And that's why I feel like the new trilogy ultimately is done. It's taken everything. One, two, and three was to tell you how the Empire formed. How Anakin Skywalker fell to the dark side. And how the Jedi Order was wiped out. It told you the rise. It told you how the Jedi. Towards their. Not the height of their power. But the height of their existence. Came crashing down. How the Republic. At the height of its existence. Crashed down. And how an evil empire rose. And took its place. How democracy died with applause. And then tells you about how people, however against our many odds are against them, fight back to restore what was the right to restore a republic, to restore democracy. 
and a young in the eyes of a young man who saw who saw who sees a man who has caused the death of several hundreds, maybe even thousands. A man who could be irredeemable to anybody's eyes, but to him, that man is redeemable. The two the greatest Jedi masters in the galaxy did not think that man was redeemable. But the son, the son of that man, brought him back to the light and fulfilled an age-long prophecy. That's, that's what Star Wars was. And with it, I feel like the last movie ultimately has caused the disappearance of the popularity of Star Wars because of that story I just said. What Star Wars feels like to me, and it probably feels like to many others, how it's just gone, disappeared, and is being replaced by... I don't even know what to call it. The age of the age of a character that for no explicit reason comes out of nowhere. We don't even learn much about the character. If anything, we learn more about the side character than the main main character than the protagonist. And then the protagonist is just inexplicably at the same level as the protagonist of the last trilogy was, and the trilogy before that was, at the end, could do stuff that those, they took training to get, that they could not do at the beginning. Okay, I will go ahead and say it. In the few day hey, episodes, seven and eight take place literally in the span of like, maybe a few weeks. And Ray has gone from Hobo who lives on Jakku, which is light, which is Tatooine 2.0, pretty much, to she is on the level of Jedi Master. Fuck it, Yoda. It took a bit of Yoda to lift fucking that many boulders to lift a fucking X Wing out of a. But in the span of a few days, she can go from, I don't know, the, for the Force is a legend to. Hey, this shit's pretty easy. I'm pretty good at it. I... <sighs> it's mismanaged, and it had so much potential, and I feel like it's just ruined. And I think what ultimately people don't like this new Star Wars is because it doesn't have the story or the heart put into it that the original had. That even the prequels, like them or hate the prequels, at least they had heart. At least the people made them, made them, making them, saw what they were doing, saw what it was, saw the story. And in the case of the prequels, saw the story that came before it and tried their best to tell you a story about you know, the story before you saw that first crawl. And then episodes four, five, and six telling you was essentially towards the essentially part two of an overarching star saga that you never saw the part one to. But then this just telling you, <sighs> telling you that everything you saw up to that point doesn't matter. I think hurts a lot of fans it hurts. A lot of people who who've grown up on this a lot may not hurt the people who are new. Because they don't have the emo they don't have the attachment. But we do. We have the attachment. And I think that's why we've seen the disappearance of the popularity of Star Wars. Because many people, many people grew that grew up on this don't want to just have stopped seeing it because they don't want to ruin the image any more than it already has. They don't want to acknowledge the new Star Wars from what it's become from what it was because they want to keep in the back of their head what it always was to them. The rise and fall of Anakin Skywalker. 
with, and with the help with his master by his side to an aid of Obi-Wan Kenobi to the son Luke Skywalker redeeming the father Anakin Skywalker and ultimately how we can fix this how how Disney and Lucasfilm can fix this I don't think episode 9 could do it what episode 9 needs to be is the apology. No one ever said this had to be a trilogy, that this new sequel, little stuff, had to be a trilogy. Make it as long as you have to. But episode 9 should be the apology. You make another one, part 2. Call it episode 9, part 2. Call it episode 10. And you make that the right way. Once they do that, people can pro- you can start bringing people back. But it will take for a long time for people to truly forgive what was done. Well, that's, that's my thoughts and views. I think I'm going to end this out off as my computer literally turns black on my face because I hadn't touched my keyboard in a minute. I hope everyone... I hope anybody that sees this have seen it at all and joined. And if you didn't, feel free, yell at me. My contacts are in the description of the YouTube video. If you're not watching this on YouTube, then feel free to email me at www.fuckyou.com. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Just go to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash ragged Find a, the find this video, or just message me on there, and tell me to your face. Well, not to your face, but tell me why you didn't like this, or tell me your thoughts, what your opinions on Star Wars is, because I love uh, ha- talking about Star Wars. It's one of my favorite topics that I never get to discuss with people, because people around me are not as deeply fond of it as I am. But other than that, I would like to thank everyone for tuning in for the pilot of the pilot podcast. God bless. May Buddha bless you. May Allah bless you. May whatever you worship, the flying spaghetti monster, Cthulhu, and may the force be with you. Have a good night, everyone. Goodbye.